I'm Keith Melton, the president of the Cane Masters. Today, I'd like to take a few minutes and demystify some of the difficulties, perhaps, with custom ordering a cane. As many of you know, every cane we produce is custom designed. We do not produce canes in advance. Each cane is produced for a specific client to their individual needs and requests. And that can be done either online or by calling us directly. And if you have a question between the two, or if you believe that your specific individual request may not be adequately communicated in the online form, we'd much rather you give us a call. On the 800 number, we're very easy to reach and we'll be very happy to take your order over the phone and answer any questions as we do. So take a look at what follows. The sequence in order may vary over time as we update the form, but I hope I'll answer most of your questions. Every person's body and their anatomical dimensions and structures is slightly different. And there is no one universal formula for measuring the correct length of a cane. If you have time, look on our canemasters.com website and I created a separate video on just how to measure your cane length. If you want an approximation, if you take your height in inches, divide it by two, and add a half inch, you'll probably be pretty close. But to be safe, we always suggest order a little longer rather than a little shorter. We can always cut one to shorten it, but we haven't figured a way yet to make it longer. The majority of our cane stock is available up to 39 inches long, which would be for an extremely tall person. However, Upon request, we can fashion longer canes, perhaps if you want to double use as both a hiking stick and a walking stick. Give us a call if that's what you would like. If there's any questions, please refer to the video or give us a call. The type of wood you select for your cane will be very important. Primarily, we work with two grades of oak and with four grades of hickory. Now, oak and hickory have the highest specific densities and are the hardest woods available to us commercially in the U.S. When they are well taken care of, they will last for your lifetime and you can pass them along to your children. The biggest enemy of wood is dryness. You can keep them well oiled you'll have a wonderful life with them and they'll be passed on to your next of kin. So in the selection, in oak we have our standard grade oak and then we have our premium select grade oak. It's a few dollars extra, but our customers often feel that it's worth it. In hickory you have more choices. Hickory is a harder wood with a number of around 1800 on the Jinka hardness scale. And also it has a higher specific density. We have our standard hickory. We have our hickory with heartwood, which means part of the cane is cut from the heart of the tree. And perhaps our most beautiful stock is the pure hickory heart. Now this is often very limited and is less than 1% of the amount of hickory that we receive. We also have something known as thumper stock. And thumper stock in hickory is selected by weight. When we receive the canes, we actually weigh them. We examine them and we weigh them. And those that are particularly heavy, we classify as thumper. Now, in some styles of carrying and personal protection, you may actually want a lighter cane. But in other styles, many practitioners prefer one that's very heavy. All of our canes will last a lifetime if you take care of them. And if you have any questions, of course, Please call us and let's talk about your particular needs. About 95% of our cane shafts are round. We do, however, in our 1 and 1 8 inch oak canes, have octagonal shafts. 
and they're listed separately on the wood types above. There is one option as you're selecting your cane, and if you wanted a teardrop shape, which is a, essentially a striking edge that would run the entire length of a shaft, here's an opportunity to select that. Other than that, a round shape would be your choice. The next topic we've got to make a decision on is the horn of the cane. And if you haven't had a chance, please take a look on our homepage to the lexicon of cane terminology that I created. And it gives the names of the different components of the cane. This is the horn, and this is the tip of the horn. And we have several choices. On the cane options page, you'll see probably a dozen different types and shapes of horns that we create. We probably do up to about 22 different styles in, in total. But they're very nice. They each have a purpose. Aesthetically, I find they're very pleasing, but some appeal to me more than others, and perhaps you the same. So it's a very personal choice, one you can make. This is an example of a bird's head horn. This is an example of a chisel tip. And this is an example of a swan head horn. Take a look, take a look at the cane options page. And you do have a choice. Some of them are more pointed than others. And if you prefer, we can make this very pointed. We can make it kind of neutral, or we can kind of blunt it if you would prefer it to be less pointed. Let us know, and again, if you have any questions, be sure to give us a call. Grips are, for my purposes, an essential component of a cane. Now, they are often represented as kind of the notches that you see on the shaft, but there's a real purpose, and they give you a very secure grip especially when I'm here in Florida, if it's hot outside and humid, then my hand gets a bit slippery. This helps me maintain a good control of the cane. But also, if you're walking, if you're hiking, if you're climbing, you may need to reach and grab up on the shaft as you're going up a hill or also down. There is another benefit, because canes are intended for mobility, stability, agility, and also for personal protection. But I'm 76. If I'm seated at a table for a long time, my back gets a little sore. I find that I plant my cane on the floor, I hold up, and I brace against that as I get up. It makes it a lot easier and more convenient for me. Now you have some choices. You can have grips at the top of the shaft. You can also have them on the crook. It makes it handy if you're using some techniques, if you're spinning your cane or doing some other movements. I like that. This is the top of the cane. We have grips at the bottom. This is used for some two-handed moves, and also occasionally we'll put grips in the middle. Once again, this is an area that we can customize the cane to the aesthetics that you like and to the martial art style or personal use style that you're enjoying. You may have seen at the bottom of the Design Your Own Cane page, or many of the entries, the option for a palm rest. And we did a separate video just to explain a palm rest. But again, when you carry a cane, your hand is forward, the horn is looking forward, and your heel rests comfortably in this little valley at the palm rest. So it makes it very useful to carry, it's very comfortable to walk with. But if you're ever in a personal protection situation and you need to use it, this would be hitting a bad guy and it's concentrating all the power in this small, narrow area. So it get him to quickly leave you alone and back off. I like palm rests. This is called the number one palm rest. It's very short. It's easy to carry. It doesn't get caught on things. It does not interfere with my use of the cane. I can maneuver with the cane, I can spin with it, I can walk with it. It is legal for me to carry anywhere I carry my cane. 
Look at the different options. The number one, the short palm rest, is by far our most popular palm rest. One of the most interesting elements in the design of a cane is shark's teeth. And the purpose of shark's teeth is to create a striking edge for personal protection on the inside of the cane that would allow you to concentrate all the force of a defensive blow into just a very small edge. And the result would be about this difference between a woman stepping on my toe with a pointed heel as opposed to a tennis shoe. The sharp pointed high heel would concentrate all of her weight in a very small area, be much more impactful than having my toe stepped on with a tennis shoe. This is a very interesting style. It requires first that we machine the V-shaped edge on the shaft, and then next that we go back and cut the notches. I have sharp's teeth on the majority of my personal pains where it's done in a section, nine to 12 inches, the cane still retains sufficient strength. It's very strong, but I like the additional edge it provides if I'm ever in a life-threatening incident. Rumble strips are a way to give a little additional personality to your cane and a little extra edge if you ever should use it in personal protection. A rumble strip is essentially a series of small notches cut in the surface of the cane. And their purpose is if someone's attacking you, if you believe your life's at risk and you need to push them away, you can use it in a raking motion. It would abrade their arm, their wrist, whatever they're trying to reach out to you. Oftentimes, many of our customers like it because to create this takes away much less wood than more significant alterations like sharp's teeth, which are perhaps sharper, but they do require removing more wood from the shaft. This is a nice in-between that gives you an additional element of personal protection, but also it retains the maximum strength and integrity in the shaft. Your next choice is whether you would like stain, which will add color to your cane, and if you'd like tongue oil. Now, tongue oil is a sealant that protects your cane. It locks the dirt and the grime and the oils out and keeps the good oils inside. Please don't confuse tongue oil, which seals the cane, with mineral oil that we use to rejuvenate the cane during the process of crafting. We have multiple colors. Our most popular is probably a gunstock brown, and gunstock brown replicates the color of pure hickory heart. We also have several other browns. We have an oxblood red, or if you choose, you can just order it without any tongue oil and without any stain, which is a natural finish. However, if you do, this means that the wood is unprotected. You've got to make sure that you wipe mineral oil on it every four weeks to make sure it doesn't dry out. Dryness is the biggest enemy of wood. Now, when we apply our stains to get color, the first thing we do is actually dye the wood, and the dye penetrates inside the shaft. The second thing we do is we'll add multiple coats of the stain which lay on top of the surface. Once they're done, they are sanded between each coat. When we're finished and happy with the color, we'll then begin the finishing process with the tongue oil. A tongue oil finish may take us seven to eight days alone, with each coat being hand rubbed. It must dry completely. It's a lengthy process, but around the seventh coat, we get this beautiful, almost glass-like finish. And by 10 coats, it's something we're very proud of and that we know you'll be happy with. If you go to our Cane Options page, and you scroll to the bottom, you'll see some examples of different pieces of wood that are stained in different colors. 
Now we haven't added the turmoil yet, so they're not quite as rich and bright as they'll be, but you'll get an idea. Each piece of wood is somewhat unique, and though we try to always produce the same identical oxblood red or the browns, there is some minor variation. But we're very proud of the colors of the cane and believe it's an excellent way to individualize your cane. It's often confusing when you see next the option for tongue oil only. And the only reason you'd use this would be if you choose not to have a stain on your cane and you just would like us to put a tongue oil on the shaft. This, for example, is a piece of pure hickory heart. This is our most beautiful wood. I never recommend adding a stain to it because the wood is just gorgeous. On this cane, we only add the tongue oil. But anytime you're making a choice, if you added stain and tongue oil above, then there's no need to select anything here. The only reason you would essentially do this is if you just want the plain piece of wood with tongue oil on it, and especially if you have the pure hickory heart, that's something you just want to enjoy and appreciate the beauty of the wood. Our engraving department does a wonderful job with laser engraving. So you have several multiple choices. If you have a moment, go to the engraving gallery page on our website and you'll see multiple examples of the job we do. Every engraving is custom and we go through and we'll backfill the engraving with a contrasting color to make sure it stands out on your cane. If it's a lighter cane, we'll do a dark, a black fill in the engraving. If it's a darker cane, we'll use either a silver or a gold fill in the engraving. If you have initials only, we recommend that they run horizontally across your cane. Usually three initials are best. We can go four, but three is recommended. If we're putting text on a cane, we will normally run it horizontally along the shaft of the cane. And you'll also see a number of custom logos. We can also engrave those on the shaft as well. We have done biblical quotes, we've put college crests, we've put personal sayings, we've added wives' names, girlfriends' names, uh, military units. We're very proud of our engraving. So if you have a question, this is one area that we recommend give us a call and let us make sure we understand exactly what you want, how you want it articulated and spelled, and some of the details. One of your choices in your cane is going to be, would you like a copper tip on the end? And the copper tip is known as a ferrule. And its purpose is to compress the lower tip of the cane to make sure that it stays together, that the wood doesn't rot, and that no moisture can come up from the bottom of the cane. In the past, before sidewalks and roads were paved, traditionally there was a big problem with the tips of canes rotting. And to protect it, they began putting shortened sections of gun barrels on the tips of cane. In effect, we do the same thing. We call them ferrules. This is an all-copper ferrule. It's custom designed to fit the cane. We actually feather the wooden shaft so it tapers seamlessly into the cane. Now on the tip, we always put a rubber tip on the end so it looks very attractive and it's very good and slip resistant. The one thing it cannot do is this. It cannot be shortened. Once it's set in place, it would have to be shortened here in our shop. This is a great deal of work to make this fit. I like copper tips on my canes. I like the way they feel when I'm handling them. And I like the extra comfort of knowing that I'm protecting the end of my cane. Your next option is going to be if you want eyes on your cane. Now the history of eyes on a cane goes back to a wise grandmaster who once instructed his student to always walk with the horn of the cane forward 
so that the eyes can look out for danger. And to memorialize this, we actually use bird-like heads on some of our canes. This is a traditional bird's head. We can also use the swan neck. Now we can add lifelike colored eyes in a variety of colors, or if you prefer, we can substitute a Savarsky crystal, which can be in either red or green. Either way, it's an element of personalization that represents your style. I certainly enjoy them and have them on many of my games. One more option is, would you like paracord on the handle? This is NATO standard paracord, seven core, very, very durable, long lasting. This is a loop we've put on the bottom and we can add six inches, nine inches, or even 12 inches at the top part of the shaft. Where you would use it is often, if you do a lot of hiking or climbing, or if you're in an extremely humid area, where you tend to perspire a lot, this gives you an extra grip on the shaft. We have a couple different ways to affix this. We can wrap it very tightly over your existing grips. So you can take it on or take it off. Or if you want it permanently installed, we can make a small hole at the top and bottom of the wrap and permanently position it in place. I personally like the temporary fix that goes on. I think that that gives me the option to put it on or off. If I'm going on a long climbing trip, I'll leave it on for the entire length of the climb, but perhaps remove it when I return home. It is just a little extra customization, but for many of our customers, we really enjoy the personalization that it brings. More than a year ago, we created our mobility card, and we have a separate video that explains it in detail. But if you're carrying a cane and you begin to travel a great deal, as I traditionally do, I always have this in my wallet. It's built to the same standards as a state driver's license. It's rigid plastic, the colors will last forever, and it gives the two primary federal laws that say that no one can legally ask you why you carry a cane, no one can tell you you can't carry a cane, and it also says that you can carry it with you on board a flight. I find it very useful. I believe you will also. We always encourage when you're buying a beautiful cane, remember, we try to make it as close to a work of art as we possibly can. We want you to be exceedingly proud to carry and display your cane. But if you're also training with a cane, one thing is certain, if you train with a cane, you will drop it. And we'd much rather you train with an inexpensive, what we call a dojo cane, one that's designed to be banged up. This is such a cane. It's a very basic, simple cane, exceedingly strong, but we don't put any final finish on it. It's only put in mineral oil, but never in fungal oil. And it's designed to be dropped. You can train with it, spin it, use it. When I began many years ago, I dropped my canes at least 100 times an hour, probably more than that. And if you train on different surfaces, they will get banged up. Get your inexpensive cane banged up, not your beautiful cane. And what we do to give you an extra incentive and give a special discount on our dojo training canes if you order them at the same time as your other cane. Probably your only choice is do I want it in oak or hickory, and what's the length I need? 